Okay, but that was kind of fancy. Yeah, so as I said in the last video, you're on the UHF today, mine. So, um, shut up. Um, pretty keen for this because uh, we're going away on a trip in four days. But by the time you're watching this, we're probably already going away on the trip since we've got to like space the videos out and stuff. I think I said in the last video I was going to do it using a Fuse piggyback, but um, I've changed my mind since I looked through the instructions of this thing, and you can actually set it so that it turns off after like a certain time of not being used. So I'm just going to do it to the battery so then I can use it any time and set it to it be like an hour of not being used it'll turn off because hopefully that won't drain the battery too much and won't leave me stranded. So yeah, we'll rip into that today. Should be fairly easy because we aren't messing around with fuse taps and stuff. <laughs> Alright, let's see what we get in the box. An aerial and another box. Oh, don't need that anymore. Alright, so we've got the aerial, some mounting pieces, mounting bracket, wiring, fuse by the look of it, the handpiece, um, handpiece mount, and the actual transceiver. So, plan is to um, mount this. When I was doing my head unit, I noticed that there is so much space up under there, under the blood box. And also, under this side, I'll be able to show you. But you can't see because my flash isn't on three, two. Now my flash is on. So there's a fair bit of space up under there. Wow, that is dirty. I don't actually know where under there, but we'll pull the glove box out and have a piece. So, we'll get rid of this glove box now. All right, that's out now, and you can kind of see where I want to mount it, up in there somewhere. Also, it's starting to rain, but the show must go on, right? So we'll keep going. So that rail right there. Oh. Hang on. What is that? There's all this wiring. Just cut wiring and zip tied onto here. That's not a UHF wire, is it? Gonna mount the transceiver up under there. So that's right under my radio, since it's got a speaker on the transceiver, that should be pretty good. So I'll see if I can add it there now and see if I can actually get my hand in there. Okay, so from looking at this, where was it? That wire there. And you know this used to have a UHF? Did it? Yeah. I believe it. Yeah, where is it? This one. Yeah, same wire. So there's a heap of UHF cable just bundled up here. Literally like one hour later, I've found a spot to mount it. Um, it's kind of all over the shop at the moment, but I'll sort that out later. For now, that's a good spot to mount it. So we're just gonna run with that. And then if I need to, I can just cut that screw down. And um, yeah, so we'll get into the wiring now, chuck the antenna on and then chuck some things through the firewall and hopefully Bob will be your stepbrother. Time to mount the antenna now. So we'll just, and we're on. So, all mounted up now. Just gotta run this back through the firewall now, so. Don't know where we'll go, but we'll figure it out. Got the power cables and the aerial wire down through there. And got the grommet on here, so I can just push that in when it gets through. Um, those two wires are lecky taped together since they're both gone to the transceiver. So I'm just gonna send that through, car, and plug it in. All right, so we've gone through the firewall behind the uh, dash there onto the passenger side. So the aerial one will just plug in and then this one, it comes with the plug. So those are just the two wires, put them into the plug somehow and then plug that in. So that's pretty neat. They just click in and then now they won't pull. Oh, I can't show you that. Well, yeah, they won't, they won't pull out now. So that's good. And uh, I actually put the right one in the right one, so that works too. Now we'll just plug it all up and then uh, we need to put battery terminals on it and then we'll be able to give it a tip. Yeah, so got it all in now, nice and torqued up to um, 30 finger newton meters according to old bloke over there. It's a bit weird anyway. Now we'll chuck the battery terminals on and um, might chuck it on channel 69 and get a bit of the radio check mic. All right, terminals on now. Just got the little clippy ones so I don't have to fully disconnect the battery was actually because the other ones are way bigger. But we'll just go with that, this makes me sound smart. I've got connections and I've got the uh, knob on my stump. Oh my God! That's, oh, I literally just did that, but anyway. Um, how do we do channel? 
Rose heard it. Channel. What channel do we want? 69. 69 it is. There we go. Yeah, mate, can I just get a uh, good old radio check, please? Yeah, so then I walked in and he was having sex with his grandma. It was fucking weird, eh? Over. I think we're good. <laughs> All right, so it's time to uh, zip tie everything up and make it nice and tidy and get rid of that um, shit houseery. So I don't really want to do it, so I might just do this. All right, done. Got the conjudage on there, um, and also got the little, I don't even know what you call it, little firewall thing, rubber bit. Grommet. Yeah, that's what it's called, a grommet. And then, um, in here, mount it up nice and tight up there, not moving, zip ties, more zip ties. Got it mounted here just with some self tappers in there. That is not moving. Chuck it on there, give it a test. Easy. All right, final touch. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, interior is back together. This works now. Had a bit of trouble with it just hitting the UHF up in there, but now it's clear. Working glove box. Working UHF, what more can a bloke ask for? Well, I'll just talk a bit about um, UHF antennas and how UHFs work, because it's important when buying UHF to know what antenna you're going to use that will best suit your um, use for your UHF. So UHF stands for ultra high frequency and pretty much the connection of the two different UHFs travels on a line of sight basis. If you can't see the vehicle or your antenna can't see the other vehicle's antenna, then you can't hear them, pretty much. So that's why you want to mount your antenna on a higher position, so you wouldn't mount it, like, really low. So you'd want it to be almost as high, if not higher, than your vehicle's roof, depending on use you want it for. So gain refers to the antenna's ability to improve the reception. So you'll hear about, like, Six and a half dBi, that sort of stuff. The dB is for um, decibels. Yeah, it's a bit hard to explain, but that's pretty much how it works. But it's not necessarily the higher the gain whip, the better. So it's tailored to your needs and what you're going to use it for. So higher gain antennas will propagate in a sort of horizontal way and will travel a lot further, but will also be um, experience a lot of interference from like hills, rocks trees, houses, that sort of stuff. Whereas lower DVI has a more circle radius and isn't so much interfered by those sorts of things because the circle can obviously bend around it, but it also doesn't travel as far. So there's sort of a balance there. So the one that I'm using is six and a half DVI. So that's right in the middle. So it's sort of best of both worlds for depending on what you're using it for. I'm mainly just gonna be using it in a convoy with mates just so I can hear them. So really that doesn't matter what antenna you use because you're never going to be more than like a K or two away from each other. But um, yeah, definitely look up and do your research before buying a UHF and an antenna because if you buy the wrong antenna, it's pretty costly. And um, yeah, you won't be able to use it. Well, you can use it, but it won't work very well for your needs. It's a bit of a waste of money. So yeah, I hope that helps everyone for um, trying to figure that out. Uh, that'll wrap up today's video. Um, I'll remind you of my Tech for Tourers um, discount code. If you don't know what Tech for Tourers is, you should go check them out. I've got the link in the description. Um, but yeah, use my code Liam5 to save 5% off on all of their products. And um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you like the video, of course, give us a like and any questions, chuck them down in the comment section. And um, if you've been liking the videos, then uh, chuck us a subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. Cheers, guys. Have a good one.